Word, the power of the Holy Ghost that is working within us. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here and that the good work that you start, you will bring to completion. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, that we know that you are for us and you're not against us. And Father, today as we side with you, we know that we are on the winning team. And we glorify your name because we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? What can man do to us? Father, we put our trust in you. We don't let the things of this world get us down, but we look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we thank you, Jesus, that you gave us the name that is above every other name, that whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. No matter what this is, this, the place is that we find ourselves, but our salvation is in you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. Listen. Let's, let's, let's do a lady praise and then we do a men praise. Okay, so first the ladies, you have your opportunity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, guys, no pressure. There goes the guys. Amen. Okay, so, 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 I get it because as Pastor Ad says, the ladies has got a higher pitch. But, but, but there's much more women in this church than men. Okay, which needs to change very quickly because our city is not demographically divided that there are more women than men in our city. Okay, so guys, we have a job to do. Okay, I see all the other people are having men's conferences, men's conferences, men's conferences. And then I ask myself, what's happening here? Okay, so uh, we're going to address that question. And we're going to do something for the men. Yeah, it's a big, Vicky Mier enthusiasm as that. Come, hoo ha! Hoo ha! Hoo ha! Where's the young lions? As you know, we're 30, as you know, skill like out. Is that true? No, man. No, 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 no. We're going to do something for the men. Come on, ladies. Are you excited that we're going to do something for the men? Yeah. Amen. It's because you've been praying. You've been praying for godly men. You've been praying for godly husbands. And you've been praying for godly husbands to be. Ne? Okay. It's like the one girl said to me, but pastor, when am I going to get married? I don't find somebody in the church. I said, first of all, you have to open up your eyes. Number two, you better pray then so that God bring that person in. But we don't date outside. It's not mission dating. I go date a guy in the world and then I try to bring him to church. If he doesn't love Jesus first, he's not going to love Jesus first at any time of his life. Okay, so if he first falls in love with you ladies then it's a problem because he will always love you more than he will love God or he will love other things more. We have to get the men to love Jesus first and then when their eyes open up, they will see all the beautiful eaves that God has brought to them and then they will come. Amen. And then you have to give them an opportunity. Okay. Sometimes the girls also don't get it. Sometimes the girls, they, they want to be treated with the macho, rough, the muscles and the man. Okay, and then the guys in the church, they are becoming domesticated because you're a Christian now. Now you have to behave well. So now when the guy in the church asks you on a date, they ask you nicely. Will you go out with me? But then comes that guy in the world and is like, baby, your legs and your eyes and your hip. And then you're like, woo! And then the guy gets you. Okay, why? Because, but if the church brother does the same thing, you're like, get out of him, demon. Okay, so give the church guys a break as well, please. Amen. All right, come on, let's give Jesus one last praise together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right, give somebody a Bluetooth. No, what's this Bluetooth thing? This is a blue, a high five. I'll give the camera people a Bluetooth high five. You can give somebody a high five and then take your seat. It's so funny. I had to drill that thing into me in the COVID time because I wanted to say high five the whole time and then I had to drill it into me and I can't get it out of me. All right. So this morning, are you ready for the word? Psalms 20 verse 7. We'll get to the pledge later. Psalms 20 verse 7. 
Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. The question this morning is, what are you trusting in? Who are you trusting or what are you trusting? In this world that we are facing right now at this time in South Africa, many of you are faced with trouble. Many of you are faced with worrying. Many of you are faced with the reality of life. Many business people, we had a fantastic business breakfast yesterday. Come on, those that were there, was it an amazing server, uh, time together? Many people that we have seen, come on, if you want to clap, clap better than that, please. Okay, it was a good one. All right. And yeah, die wat uitgemis het, het uitgemis. Jylle het big time uitgemis. Okay, because it was really good. No, don't miss these things, because it's for you. All right, it's for you. It's to build you up and to, to stir you up and to get you to a place. And um, in the future, we will do business breakfast like this as well because it's open to everybody else to invite people, give people an opportunity to give their lives to Jesus. And then we will have different kinds of more internal business breakfast where we will focus on the business people in the church and we will talk about challenging when it comes to the building pledge and development and things like that. But I'm not going to use that type of business breakfast like yesterday to try to talk about these things because you can have an in-house meeting and then you can have a meeting where you bring other people in. And uh, the Holy Spirit really spoke to me about it this week that we have to do in-house, but we also have to do those that we bring other people in. And it's going to be completely two different focuses. All right. So in a moment like this that we have an open business breakfast where everybody's invited, bring your friends, target people. You know, there were people sitting there and they said to me afterwards, they said, if I knew this is the type of meeting it is because they've been there for the first time so would they wouldn't know they said if i knew this this is what a crc breakfast is all about the business breakfast then i would have invited that business guy that business guy that business guy that business guy and i said well so the next one that's what you're going to do we're going to bring the people okay because we want to build in the person we want to build into the person and then the person's loyalty and commitment will come to god's kingdom amen because you first built into something before you can receive anything from anyone amen? amen commitment first from your side so what are you trusting in what are you facing when we look at the reality out there we see a lot of reality that can get us negative okay and the reality out there is when you look at the economy i mean when last did you go for shopping just to take your trolley out and to fill up your trolley with the same stuff that you always buy. And then suddenly you see things have just skyrocketed. Uh, uh, money didn't get more, but the expenses got more. I mean, yesterday we had some disturbing um, stats. Okay, did you know that 55% of South Africans are living under the poverty line? The poverty line is 990 rand per month per person. Yeah. And 55% of our people live under that okay and then which is even worse because our cps's was supposed to be over 500 rand already it is actually supposed to be 800 rand but the thing is the government doesn't have the money so what they what they do is they try to control with the little that they have and actually they do have the money but they just sit on it so that they can buy new toyota hilux buckies to go and promote their new campaign for the next year that's what they do that's what they show so we'll say it as it is okay they spend the money on the wrong places they don't give it to the people and then they come buy you with a t-shirt and a food parcel okay it's not gonna buy you a future okay you better be just vigilant this year when you vote just think just think okay just think all right okay because I'll say some stuff because they say stuff and it's just lies all right but the thing is if you look at the injustice in our country that has been done to the people and our people have become de de dependent on state this province the northern province northern cape province is the province that is the most um well not the wealthiest it's the it's the most dependent upon the government support the most but it's the wealthiest province I saw a picture yesterday of two people, poor people sitting on, the, on, on, on a piece of land and underneath them there's diamonds. And they said that's the picture of Africa. We have all the wealth in the world, but we choose 
to let government keep us poor and tell us that the 350 is enough to live. And if you behave well and you sit at home and you do nothing and you have a child, then you can come and you can collect your 350. But 350 is not even half of what you need to survive. But yet people has gone down to that level where they think it's okay. It's horrible. It's poverty and it's a disgrace because it becomes government dependence. I say, South Africans, the only way to get out of this hole is to dig yourself out of it. So the thing about our country is we're going to get out of this hole, but we're going to have to work very, very hard. It's not going to be a sit on your lazy daisy, sit on your bum and think somebody's going to throw you a rope and get you out of this situation. Long enough we've done that in this country where we sit and we expect the U.S. to help and the U.N. to help and Europe to help and everybody throws us money at some expense. And they have cheap labor in Africa and all we can do is just settle for less. These things need to change. These need to, things need to change in our communities. Because it's easy just to listen to the clever people. And meantime, the clever people, you know, I just looked at the stats the other day when it comes to food. If you, uh, just do yourself a favor. Just go Google and say how much, just Google, how many food, tons of food are wasted every year that could have been given to, to, to poor people you will fall on your back. There's enough food in this world on a monthly basis to feed the whole world. Did you know that? Without it costing anybody anything. But it's because these systems and these levels that people place there. But we don't trust in that. But if you do, you have a problem. My brother, my sister, I want to tell you, it's good to prepare. It is good in this world to have everything ready. It's good to have your insurance. It's good to have your, your, your begrafnis polis. It's good to have life insurance. It's good to have these things. But the thing is, some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we have to trust in the name of the Lord. The challenge is, that if you walk a faith walk, you get the people that believe only faith. I grew up like that, where you don't go to the doctor, you pray. Okay? I grew up like that. You don't go to the doctor, you pray. And you pray until you are healed. Unfortunately, many people died through that. That's just the reality. No, correct me, how many. But that's the truth. Okay? Many people got healed, miraculously, but many people died. Because they could have just gone to the doctor. Okay? But then there's the other side where we trust in horses and chariots we only trust what the doctors say and we don't trust what the lord says and all we do is we just go to what man says what the professionals say you can't have either or you have to have both because there is a man part and there is a god part there is a part where god does his thing and where man needs to do their thing there is the as i've preached about the kingdom of heaven on earth we have our part to play and then god works with us because we are co-laborers, which means God does the healing. You can talk to any doctor. Every doctor will tell you that you cannot heal a person if there is not facilitation in the body itself. The body needs to heal itself. All you can do is facilitate the healing. Help it on. But you can't heal because you're not a healer. So you need God's part to bring the healing. But then you need the wisdom part, which is studying and seeing and doing tests and results and see what's happening so that you can bring the two together. So and that's the problem because you will have people that get a bad report and the first thing they will do is they will say, okay, I'm not going to listen to any of these doctors. I'm going to isolate myself and then I'm going to fight this through in prayer. And some make it, but some don't. You know, one of my best friends, his mother, beautiful woman. Until today when I speak to him, he's like really angry at his mother and his father because they both were in the ministry and they believed that through prayer she will be healed. And she died of such a stupid, simple thing that if she just went to the doctor, she wouldn't have died. It would have been a little small operation that wouldn't even have kept her for 24 hours in the hospital and she would have lived another 20, 30 years. But they refused and they said, no, we're going to pray this thing. We're going to pray this thing. Now, I don't have a problem. What I'm talking to you about is when you don't have access, then this is the only resort. But this is the first resort. But if there's help, then let the help help. 
It's like the guy that was sitting on the rooftop and there was a flood and he was sitting on the rooftop and um, the, the water was everywhere and the water was rising and rising. You all know the story. And then they came about and the guy said, listen, he was praying on the roof. He said, God, help me. God, save me. And then the boat came by and he, say, he said, get on the boat. He's like, no, no, God's going to save me. And then the boat went. And then a little bit later, there comes another ship and he's like, get up. He's like, no, 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 God's going to save me. And he prays, Lord, save me. And then comes the helicopter and he's like, no, 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 it's okay. God's going to save me. And then he drowns. Gets to heaven and God says, what's this? He said, well, Lord, I was waiting for you to save me. The Lord said, I sent you a boat, I sent you a ship, and I sent you a helicopter, and you just wouldn't get on. So there's this balance when it comes to things. First God, first God, first God, first God, first God. I hear what the doctor says, but God, first God. What does God say? Okay, and then I take what God says, and I listen to the wisdom of this world. But I'm not going to let the wisdom of the world dictate to me what my life is going to be. There needs to be a relationship. That's why I thank God for godly doctors. You know, personal testimony. About two years ago, the first time that I started going for tests through my blood and things, um, I just saw my life is going down the drain very quickly, my health. Okay? And I started picking up certain challenges and I started seeing things. I'm not going to give you the detail. All I'm going to tell you is I was on my way to die very quickly. Okay? I might have lived a few years later, longer, but I was on my way very quickly to die. And then I met this amazing doctor, child of God, loved Jesus, also in CRC. I'm not going to mention names because I don't want to do that. It's not advertisement. It's, it's glory to God. So what happened is because God gave him this amazing um, a witness that he should help the pastors in CRC because of our high levels of stress. And then he came and he sat, he looked at my blood, and we did DNA tests, he did everything, and then he said, okay, we have to get you on this course to help you, okay? I pray to God, Lord, help me, heal me, because I'm really tired, I'm really struggling here. It, things are getting ahead of me. Suddenly I become dull on my head and my thinking, and I started worrying. And the more you worry, the worse it gets. And you pray, you pray, you pray, and nothing happens. And I said, Lord, give me wisdom, and God gave me a person. And the person would sit and talk to me, and it's now been two years. It's now been two years. Two years later and for the first time my blood result shows that I'm actually in a regenerative state for the first time so now my blood is level it's clean and I'm in the process of actually getting younger and healthier because it's regeneration now that's kingdom just by the way that's by the way it's kingdom okay because everything about kingdom is restoring restoration to the original Okay, so now I can say thank God for that and I'm a living witness and I can witness I can testify of it So it is to bring the balance to understand that that you have the God and you have the doctor you have God alone and you have the doctor and there is a Work that has to work together a co-labor sh- laboring Okay, so listen to me when I say this because I know some people are going to get mad at me and say, yeah, but you are trusting in the arm of the flesh. No, I'm not trusting in the arm of the flesh. But I'm also not stupid. Okay, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years ago, you didn't have much to trust on when it came to the arm of the flesh because technology wasn't there. Okay, so it would be very dangerous to put your hands just in the doctor's hands. But today things have changed. Why? Because wisdom, knowledge, information has come. And the study of how God does things. But every doctor will tell you that God is the healing factor in everything. You can do whatever you want to. If you take God out of the equation, nothing will happen. Because He's the source of life. So saying that, I want you to understand the balance of what I'm preaching. But you can be only the doctor. The doctor said, I have cancer, so now I have to treat it according to what the doctors say. No. You don't have to. Because you have a decision. When the opinion comes because it's an opinion it's not a fact that's what you need to learn when something comes towards you it always comes like a fact but it's not necessarily a fact it's an opinion okay it's a it's a there's a diagnosis but you have to choose whether it's gonna settle in your heart and whether you're gonna make it take root and when you're gonna live according to it so you can take it and you can suffer with it or you can say no I hear what you say I take abreast of the facts, but these are not facts because these things can change. 
Because my God, I trust in my God. I trust in the name of the Lord. I do not trust in horses and in chariots, but I trust in the name of the Lord. And God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So I'm going to have a sound mind about this, and I'm not going to take the label, but I'm going to walk in the freedom that God has given me. However, I am going to sit and I'm going to listen to the wisdom so that I can do the right thing, that I can be healed, that I can be touched, that I can facilitate whatever I have to facilitate. Okay? Are you listening to me? I'm using health now as a, because I'm experiencing it now in my life. Okay? Because I grew up in a place where it's just like, as you sick as bad, you may brew. That's that. There's no medicine in There's no You bet. You flame up with fever and you're lying there the whole night and everybody is praying around you. After a while you feel like, and you're like, as a belief, I did a camera come. As a belief, I full of a cannon bluff. Okay? But yet, God was faithful in healing many people like that because in that place, in that time, you ask me, Pastor, why do we see more miracles on the crusades? I mean, we're having a three-day crusade this next week and I'm promising you, the more rural you go, the bigger the miracles become. I've seen in Africa supernatural miracles. People getting out of, well, they don't even have wheelchairs because it's there to poor. And people that are lame walk and people that are blind, their eyes pop back into their sockets. And then you ask, but why doesn't God do that? Yeah, good question. Because the dependence of the people is not on that level. And the provision, which is kingdom, where we help one another, where we take responsibility, where we step into God's will for our life to walk in divine health and not just from miracle to miracle, that part is not there. Here we have it. And that's why we need to support it. And that's why we need to live by it. And that's why we need to help one another. I hope you understand what I say. Anders gaan jy nou hier met dit ding. It's like a, that time that I preached in Wegdraai. And I read the scripture where I said, if you slaughter an animal for worshiping God, and your heart is not in it, there's the key, your heart is not in it, then it's like killing a man. So the next time I got there, the whole community was in uproar. This pastor says, if you kill a goat, you kill the man. <laughs> and that's not what I said. So don't see what I don't say. See what I say. Amen. 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 Read ya. There is the part where you can only trust this side and there is no safety in it. You can always trust in this side alone and there's safety in it. But then there's also wisdom. Where the same God will tell you, go see that person, go do this, because God is a relational God. So God will speak to you and then God will connect you with people that knows what they're talking about so that they can help you. That's what I'm trying to say here. But the relationship was originated in God. You hear what I'm saying? Not I run to the world and then when the trouble comes, I run to God and He's my spare wheel. We see that too many times. He's the spare wheel. I've got a flat tire. Lord, change my tire. And then I'm okay until I see, okay, things are okay again. Then I leave God and I'm back in the world. No, God is your steering wheel. He's not your spare wheel. I'm going to say it again. He's your steering wheel. He's not your spare wheel. Stop treating Him, by the way. Stop, stop treating Him as... As, as secondary. People say, yeah, but alles, alles it's a tight. It's a tight for kerk and it's a tight for... I mean, listen, that is a religious thing. God is not God on Sunday and then in the week He's waiting for you in the closet. And then when you choose to come and visit Him in the closet, He finds you. No. God is with you everywhere. He is wherever you go. He said He will never leave you, never forsake you. He is wherever you go. There He is. You can talk to Him at any time. And He can talk to you at any time. Because He's a relational God. So don't think when you walk into the bathroom, God is waiting outside. He is going in with you. When you're in the shower, He's not waiting outside. He's in there with you. God sees you like you are. Because He created you. There's nothing you can do. En wanneer jy nou die kat in die donker wil kruip, knijp, moet nie dink jy, jyre, wacht, buiten kan die deur nie. Hy staan neda. En hy witness alles wat jy doen. Volgende keer, dan klop jy hart so. Jyre staan hier so. May the conviction get you out of that bed so quick. 
May the conviction get a hold of you so badly. <laughs> Amen. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. You know, I like it that it says you will remember. God said, I even I am he that blotteth out your transgressions and I remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. And all I ask is that you would remember my name. You know, the biggest challenge that God had with the Israelites was he wanted them to just remember what he did for them. He said, now tell the story. Like I said last week, tell the stories. Remind people of who I am. When Jesus sat around the table with communion, he said, remind them. As often as you do this, remind them. Remind them about the name of the Lord. Remind them what I've done. Remind them that I'm still God. Remind them. This morning, I want to remind you that you should trust in the the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 10, we used to sing a song like this. I'll give away my age when I sing it. But it was a charismatic song for the time. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and are safe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. See, I can still do it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Okay. I sang that song when I gave my life to Jesus in 1996, the 14th of April. That was the song. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runs into it and they are safe. You're, you are safe in the name of the Lord. Exodus chapter 20 verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now that's a very strong scripture. God says, don't take my name in vain because I will not deal with you easily. I will not leave you guiltless if you take my name in vain. Now when I say take the name of the Lord in vain, the first thing that you think is people saying, blinkity blink. When you get mad and you use the name of the Lord. That's a part of it. Using the name of the Lord in vain. I, it, it, it used to trigger me so much when people would use the name of the Lord. And some of you I know, you get so angry when somebody used that. I spoke to somebody the other day and they chased the people out of the house swearing. <laughs> because they used the name of the Lord in vain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I say, Jesus is blessed. I'm using it as an example. So I would also feel like that. Why do you use the name of the Lord in vain? And then the Holy Spirit really got a hold of me. He said to me, listen. Listen, listen, before you judge, how many times have I told you I'm Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and still you stress about the fact that I'm not providing, and you think I'm not providing. Aren't you using my name in vain? How many times have I told you that I am your righteousness, and still you walk before me like you are a sinner, and you come and crawl before me, and I say, but I am the Lord, Jehovah Zedkeno, your, your righteousness. So why do you treat my name in vain? I said, oh, Jesus, help me. Why do you say you're, uh, you're unsaved and you're unworthy, but I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to come and save you and redeem you from all your, your, your sicknesses and your diseases and to, to, to redeem you from your sins and still you stand before me? Don't use my name in vain. And then this whole thing became a whole nother level. Using the name of the Lord in vain is not just shouting the name of Jesus in an improper manner or using the name of God in an improper manner. And that's a sickness in our world because people do that. And we think it's okay. As someone say, Yara, of one say, Godman, of one say, Jesus, of Yara. All of those are, are, are like swearing because it's using the name of the Lord in vain. But yet there's all another level. How many times have I not trusted the name of the Lord? Because he said, I am. Romans chapter 10. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord, 
The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Those who run into it, the righteous shall run into it and they will be safe. Don't use the name of the Lord in vain. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you shall believe in your heart and you shall confess with your mouth. What? Believe that I am Lord. Confess that I am Lord and you will be saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other under the name of heaven amongst whom men shall be saved. None other than the name of the Lord. So the question is the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Well, glad you asked. Let's look at God's revelation names. Because the first time that you read about God is Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And it says, in the beginning, God. That word God is actually an amazing word. If you go look it up, you will find that it is a word that is both singular and plural. It's the only word in the Hebrew that explains that it's singular and plural. Which means, oh my word, God is three in one. It's singular, but it's plural. It's the only word. It's the only name. So that word God is Elohim. And Elohim is plural and singular in one. But that word means creator. So when God created, God introduced us. He introduced himself to this world as the creator. God creates. And then God said, let us make man in our image. But I want to show you something. The Bible says, and God created the stars and he created everything and then he comes and he says and God said let us make man and the Lord God made man there God introduces himself as with a different name he says I'm not just the creator but I am the Lord of the creation which means the word Lord is two different names okay well they pronounce it two different different ways in the in the uh, uh, in the ancient Hebrew. The first one was Jehovah. And the second one was Yahweh. Jehovah and Yahweh talks about the Lordship of God. What is the Lordship of God? It reveals who He is. When Jesus came, Jesus didn't use Yahweh, then Jesus didn't use Jehovah, but Jesus used Abba. And Abba is Father. And the root of all three of these words is Father. So when Jesus came, they hated him because how can you say God is your father? How dare you? Jesus never said anything wrong. The problem was that the religion took the name of God and they said, we're not going to say Jehovah. We're going to call him Yahweh. And the reason why we call him Yahweh is because we're only going to use the letters. Okay, the capital letters, and we're not going to use the symbols. We're just going to use the consonants. Because God's higher. Now, His name is too high. He is too holy. He is too great for you to familiar yourself with Him. And that's where religion stepped in. God is so high, so big, so great, that you, as a little man, have nothing. Okay? The funny thing is, the word Yahweh is actually the sound that comes out of your lungs. Now, some of you have watched the video. Okay, if you breathe it in. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. There it is. Okay, because he's the breath of life. So when Yahweh comes, it is the source of life. He's the source of everything. He's the source of creation. He's the source. But when we talk about Jehovah, and then Jesus came, and he actually just explained it to them in Aramaic, that your Jehovah actually means Father, Abba. My father, our father who art in heaven. Oh, the Jews got so mad at him. They said, how dare you? How dare you put yourself on the same level as God? But they could not discern that he was the son of God and that he was God. So they got mad with him. Why? Because how can you bring God into a close personal relationship? God should be high above there. You know, some religion people, they tell us, God's ways are higher than our ways and God is so high that we can't reach Him. And God is sovereign and God is big and God is... And all we are is a bunch of worms and we are just a little sinner, a speck of dust, a little nothing. Okay, how do you feel when you leave that meeting? 
My God is so far separated from you that there's just no relation. And Jesus comes and he says, hey, let's stop this separation thing and let me introduce God how he introduced himself. Because when he introduced himself and when he made you, when he made you and me, he said, the father of creation. The father of creation created you. The Lord God created you. The Lord, the father of creation created you. Hmm? relationship so the first revelation is one that he gave I am the creator the second one he did is also he gave it he says I am in relationship with my creator with my creation and then came sin and sin separated and after that every other name that God revealed himself through had to come through personal revelation my brother my sister the names of God you discover them through your journey in life. Count it all joy, brethren, when you go through various trials and tribulations. Because listen, 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 listen. He is your Father. But in that relationship, every time that you go through something, you call upon the name of the Lord. You call your Father. And you know what God does? God allows you to go through the situation, but then He always gives you a revelation name. He always does it. You go through sickness. You suffer through sickness. Then you call upon the name of your father, Father God, Father God, heal, Father God, help. You know what happens? Then Father God comes and he reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. Why? Because he's a God of covenant. He says, my son, you have gone through this suffering, but I will heal you. Because whatever is yours is mine. Whatever is mine is yours. And we are going to exchange this. And for that, I am going to give you a covenant name. The covenant name by which you will call me whenever you go through sickness will be Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth me. And for every single thing that you go through, he gives a name. Jehovah Nissi in Exodus chapter 17 verse 15 what does it mean Jehovah Nissi the Lord is my refuge it was a revelation he did not have refuge he was running around he was looking for safety the name of the Lord is a strong tower but those that run into it they are safe and he discovered that the name of the Lord is the Lord Jehovah Nissi and he stepped into Jehovah Nissi. Then we find Jehovah Jireh. Hey, Abraham. He was looking and he said, but the Lord will for himself supply. God will supply for himself. What will God supply? God will supply for himself a lamb. God will send the salvation. God is the supplier. God is the source. And therefore God came and God said, Abraham, because you would not withhold your son, in you I will bless the earth. In you I will be the provision. In you I will give over abundant above, exceedingly overflow. That's who I am. My name is Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. It's through my struggle and through my relationship that God comes and He reveals Himself. Every single name that God has revealed Himself with through the Bible is a revelation because of somebody's battle. You go through a battle, you get to meet God. You call upon the name of the Lord, you get to know His heart. You know that He's your Father and not just your Father, but then He comes and you have a personal encounter with God in a specific area and then he makes himself known as your covenant God of that area. So he is my healing, Rafa. He is my provision, Chaira. He is my safe place, Nisi. This is my God. It continues. He is Jehovah Shama, the God who is always there. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He is always there. He is Jehovah Tzitkinu, the Lord, my righteousness. Jesus came and he made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You receive Jesus, you are declared righteous. So your revelation when you meet Jesus and you just suddenly feel good about yourself, you feel saved, you feel delivered, what happens? Suddenly you experience Jesus and you are like, I feel right again. I gave my life to God now, now I feel right again. Why? Because his revelation struck you as a revelation in your heart through relationship and he says i am right with god he is my righteousness he is the lord jehovah chitkina he is my righteousness jehovah Ruah. 
Or Jehovah Ra. Sorry, we'll get to Ra. Jehovah Ra. What is Jehovah Ra? Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is my way. He is my shepherd. That's who he is. So when I have a relationship, when I go to a place where I feel alone, suffering, I have a relationship with God because I call upon the name of the Lord. I run into the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runs in and they are safe. And the safety that I experience is Jehovah Ra. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is with me. He prepares a table before me. The Lord is there. It's a present God. That's who He is. Jehovah Shalom. They all know mean what knows what shalom means. Shalom means nothing lost, nothing broken. It means peace. The Lord is my peace. Oh, I love it. Nothing lost, nothing broken. The Lord is my peace. Nothing lost, nothing broken. So that's why when the Jews greet, greet each other, they say shalom. Why? Because they speak a blessing over you. Nothing is lost, nothing is broken over you. I declare it over you. So when I meet God, I meet God, the Lord, the Father that is supplying and providing, and the Lord, my Father, where there is peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and He gives me peace that surpasses all understanding that God, my mind and my heart, and I walk in the peace because because that's who he is. And the peace that he gives me is the peace that I live in. It's not a peace that this world gives, but it's a peace of God. It's a peace that keeps me safe. It's a peace that I know that my God is for me. Who can be against me? That's who my God is. Jehovah Shalom. And this is one of my favorites. Jehovah Mikadish. Jehovah Mikadish means the Lord who sanctifies. The Lord who sanctifies. He comes and He purges you and He purifies you and He cleanses you and He sanctifies you. He finds no spot, no blemish, nothing in you. Why? Because He gave Jesus to you. Jehovah Rohi, the Most High God, the God that is all seeing. His eyes are going to and through the earth and He's looking, finding somebody whose heart is turned upon Him. He is the everlasting God. Jehovah Shaboth. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the army God. He's the God that's got all the armies of all the angels and they're all with me and they all will protect me. Oh my goodness. If you start to have this relationship with God and you start to get to know Him, every name, every revelation, that's why your life is a journey with God. It's not I give my life to Jesus, now I wait for heaven. No, it is a journey. It's discovering God for who He is. Because God is like an ever-changing diamond. It, where every time you look at Him, you see something different. There's another revelation. There's another revelation. There's another aspect that you've never seen. God is just so awesome. He's absolutely amazing. He's called God Emmanuel. God that is with us. Emmanuel with the E, which means God with us, and then Emmanuel with the I, which means God in us, the Holy Spirit. And then he sent us Jehovah Yeshua, which the people call now Yeshua Messiah. Okay, now that is Jewish, my friend. You don't have to walk around now and say, Nee, die naam van Jesus is verkeerd, dit moet Yeshua wees. Okay, so what can you mean? My name is Jacques, but it's this Franz. So my Afrikaans name is Jacobus. Okay, my English name is John. So what will you know for my name? But if you can say John or Jacobus or Jacques, I can react. Because I'm still the same person. Yeah, we can have our kopen verloor. We are heilig to try to wees. Huh? We can so heavenly minded that we are earthly no good. Hmm? And that's why I don't like this stuff where people come with this higher than thou speeches. My broer, I stand for you here for the day. I think I'm here, Jesus. I don't like that stuff because it's, it's fake. There's not reality in that. Just tell me, how are you? I'm well. No, I'm not well. Or my, I'm struggling. Or, okay, I'm... I'm I go, my blank on boer. Whatever you have to say. But this religious facade to try to explain something, all it tells me is you've got a big sin to hide. 
Whoopsie. Did I say that? He is the Lord El Shaddai, the Almighty, the Almighty God, the Mighty One of Jacob. It's amazing that he says the mighty one of Jacob because it was through revelation. He is El Elua, the mighty strong and omnipotent, prominent God. He is El Elyon, the most high God. He is El Roy, the all-seeing God. He is El Ulam, the everlasting God. He is El Gibor, the mighty God. Oh, and I can continue with the list because it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. But then, Moses said, what shall I tell my people who sent me? And he says, I'll sum it up in one word, all of it. I am. I am that I am. I am sent you. And Jesus, in that moment, he asked his disciples, I preached this in Pretoria, he asked his disciples, he says, so who do you say that I am? He didn't ask, who am I? He said, who do you say that I am? I know who I am. I am. But who do you say? What is your revelation in your circumstances of who God is? Do you trust in money? Do you trust in investment? Do you trust in the world? Do you trust in systems? Or do you trust in horses and in chariots? Or do you trust in the name of the Lord? Because the name of the Lord is the name I am. Who do you say that I am? And they said, some say you are this and some say you are that. He says, but you, who do you say that I am? And he said, Peter said, you are the Christ. You are Jehovah salvation. You are the name of the Lord that when I call upon your name in the day of trouble, you shall save me. You are the Lord, my salvation. You are the Lord, my redeemer. You are my El Elyon. You are my Jehovah Roy. You are my Jehovah Rapha. You are my Jehovah Miss do you are my Jehovah Nessie you are the banner you are everything because you are the great I am you know this is what I love about the Jewish language Hebrew when I call you say for instance I call Pastor Nathan I say Nathan how do, how do we respond Nathan okay off Nathan that's what we say do you know how the Jews respond when you call their name? Here I am. Nathan? There's a difference. If I say here I am, it means you've got my undivided attention. I'm available to you. Whatever you want, you are my Lord. Your command, your wish is my command. That's how they respond. So when Abraham... <laughs> got the revelation and he came to God and he says, God, how does God answer? When you call upon the name of the Lord in the day of trouble, he will save you. Why? Because when you call upon the name of the Lord, his name is a strong tower. When you call upon the name of the Lord, he's got the name above every other name. When you say, you call the name of the Lord, he answers. God answers. God always answers. The Bible says in, what is it, Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer thee. You call upon the name of the Lord, what happens? He answers. And how does he answer? He says, I am. So before you can say, God, I need healing, he says, I am. God, I need healing. I am Jehovah Rapha. God, I am. I need finances. I am the Lord, your provider, Jehovah Jireh. That's who I am. So even before I have asked him, he already is. The scripture that says, before you have prayed, he has already answered you. Because God is everything that you need Him to be whenever you need Him to be. But it is through relationship. It's through coming to the Father and say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus because there is no other way but the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how the Bible teaches us to pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus because He made a way where there was no way. 
and I do it by the intercessory power, the paracletos, the presence of the Holy Spirit, so that my words are carried by the wings of the Holy Spirit into God's presence, so that when I speak God's word, the Holy Spirit wraps himself around it, and he performs every word that was spoken. So there is a security when I speak to my God that he hears me. He is waiting for you to talk to him. And when you call upon his name, you shall be saved. You know, the Bible says in the following, and I'm going to wrap it up here. Philippians chapter 2. Jesus, who were in the, th the form of God, never thought himself to be equal with God. What does that mean? Jesus came and he knew, I'm not going to come as God. I'm going to come as Savior. I'm going to come as a human. I'm going to come as a brother. I'm going to come as a best friend. I'm going to come like man. I'm going to be just like them. I'm not going to come as God. I'm going to come on their level. And because he did this, what does the Bible say? The Bible says in verse 9, Therefore, therefore why? Because he humbled himself. Because he made himself of no reputation. Because he made him equal, equal with you and me. Therefore, God has given him the name El Elyon. Therefore God has, has given him, highly exalted him and given him the name, which is above every other name, the Most High God, El Elyon. Jesus is El Elyon. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in, of things in heaven, of things on earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. The name of Jesus is above every other name. So when you say Jesus, what do you say? You call all the names of God in one name. Why, oh why do you think people want to curse the name of Jesus? I've never heard somebody bump their toe and say, Oh Allah. Or the taxi drives in front of them and they shout at them, Hare Krishna. It's always Jesus. Why is Hollywood only focused on Jesus? Why is it always Jesus? Because it's a name above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You know, I did this when I was in Mainland Shopping Center as a young boy. Very radical. I would walk in the mall, and then there would be thousands of people. And I would go stand in the middle. Me and my friend, his, say, say nick, his nickname was Mental. Okay? No, don't know that. Okay, that was his nickname. Mental. So... Mental and I, Marius and I, would go walk in the mall. And then we would stand where everybody's there and we would stand on the top where there's just thousands of people. And we sh I would shout at the top of my voice, Jesus! And everything would quiet down. And everybody would look up. Big eyes. And I knew, at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. So, why do you think people get mad when you say Jesus and you use, use the name in vain? I want to ask you today, please, in your relationship with God, cherish His names. Cherish His character revelation to you because you can have revelations about God you can have re revelations about the kingdom but then you can have the personal God interaction revelation the presence of God where God tells you who he is and then he doesn't just tell everybody I am this and I am that no he tells you when you go through your suffering when you go through your pain he takes you to a place where it is you and him and for the first time you experience that revelation he is my peace he is my victory he is my healing he is my provision he is my source. He is above every other God. You have that personal experience and you have to write it down because that's what the Bible did. Every person that had a revelation of who God was. And you know what is amazing? We can have all those revelations in our lifetime. If you go look at these titles of God, these names, you will find that many of these names, He only revealed Himself it took sometimes 200, 300 years, 400 years, 500 years before he would reveal the next name. 
Because until they don't get it, I can't give you the next one. When I get to heaven, I want to know God. I want to know all His names. I want to know every name. Because Jesus said, this is eternal life. That you know God. And that you know Jesus Christ whom He have sent. Paul wrote and he said, that I may know you, O God. And the fellowship of your suffering. And the power of your resurrection. What did he say? He said, Lord, I want to know you in your worst moments. And I want to know you at your best victories. Because if I know you in your worst moments and how you coped while you were sweating blood. And I can know you when you kicked the devil on his head and you smashed this world's government into pieces. And you are the great God, Jehovah. I want to know you. I want to know you in every part. Intertwined right through my life. There's nothing like knowing God. That is the one thing that I desire. To know Him, and here comes the next part, to make Him known. It doesn't help me to know all the names, and I impress you about all the names. The question is, have I communicated the names to you? Have I given you a personal encounter with that name? Have I given you an opportunity to meet the name? above every other name? Have I explained it to you? Have I spent time with you so that you can also have that experience of what have I done? Because that's the next level. Knowing God and to make Him known to my world, to make Him known to all people. You know, you can get so excited about the names of God that you can walk the whole week and you can tell people, did you know that God's one name is this? And that means that He will actually do the following for you. And that means that if you come to Him, He will save you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. Because this is who He is. That's His character. His character is placed in His name. The Bible says His word is above His name. Everything about God, His integrity is in His name. If He said, I am your healer, then nothing can stop Him from healing you. But you have to get the revelation. You know, I love what Pastor Nas taught us about the first fruit. You can have God's general obligation where He is God and He has to do these things because He has said it. And then you have God's commitment. God's commitment where you come to God and through a personal encounter and applying a personal revelation, then God has to commit Himself to you. And He has to perform that thing for you because it's a personal thing. It's not for everybody. It is for everybody, but it's not for everybody. It is through a personal encounter. So I cannot be presumptuous and say, because God did it for them, He will do it for me. No. Do I have a revelation of who my God is? Do I have an encounter with my God? Because if I say He can do it for everybody and He doesn't do it for me, then I get offended when He doesn't do it. Because God is not obligated to do it. But when He came to me, whether it's through a vision, a dream, or just a personal encounter, and he says, I am. It changes everything. I am. I will supply. I will provide. I will look after you. I am the great I am. Now you go in this name. You go in my name. Because that's who we are. Family, we walk in the name of Jesus. We walk in the name of God. Wherever we go, we walk with His name. So when people encounter us, let them encounter God. Oh, come on, let's stand and give Jesus praise this morning. Just give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for revelation. Oh Lord Jesus, I pray that you will stir it up in us. That when we call upon your name, that we will know, that we know, that we know that you are the great God, Jehovah. That you are the great I am. That there is nothing you cannot do. That you are for us and you are not against us. That you said we are the head and not the tail. We will be above and not beneath. No matter what we face, even if we walk through the water, you will save us. If we go through the fire, you will protect us. Father, that we will experience you as a personal God. That we will experience you close, Lord Jesus. That you will not be a distant God. That it will not be a religion. But it will be your knowing you close by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, come and just reveal yourself to us close, Lord Jesus. That we will know who you are. I pray, Holy Spirit.
for every person to have an encounter with you in their bedroom at night in the sleep lord jesus when they are alone when they are in that shower or in that bathroom where they are alone in the car lord jesus i pray that you will come and manifest your names to every single person lord that they will experience you and as they dig into the word and they start to study your names lord i pray father that it will be revelation upon revelation so that as we behold you as in a mirror as we study the word we look into the mirror of the word and we don't see our imperfections but we see your perfect fiction that we look and behold as in a mirror we are changed from glory to glory into your image to be like you to walk like you to talk like you that we will be consumed by you lord jesus that we will be the best example lord jesus that we will not focus on our imperfections but we will focus on your perfection and your glory that is upon us and yet you said rise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is upon you the Spirit of the Lord is upon you because He has anointed you to go and make a difference, to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, to make a difference, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord that we can walk in this, that we know who you are because you are in us. We are drenched by you. In you we live, we move, we have our being. And thank you, Father, that you will just consume us with yourself and that we can live in you, breathe in you. And Father, that we can, wherever we go, that we will not be holier than thou, but that we will be people that are relevant to people around us. That we will be genuine. That we will be humble. But we will be loving. We will be caring. And we will be sharing, Lord. Use us mightily, Lord, in this generation. Use us mightily in this city, I pray, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, we love you. Your life, your, your life, your life is better than our lives. One moment in your presence, Lord. One moment in your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. I ask you, Lord, this morning for every person that is not connected with you, every person that is unsaved, every person that is backslid, and I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will nudge their hearts and knock and knock and knock until the door opens up. Thank you, Lord, that this morning we could call upon the name of the Lord and we shall be saved. Holy Spirit, I pray, work the work. While every head is bowed, every eye closed, you are sitting in this place and you're saying to me, Pastor, my life is not right with God. I don't have a relationship with God. Just because you were raised in the church doesn't mean you know God. This is eternal life, that you will know God and Jesus, that you have a personal relationship. This is, just wait there. Band, just wait. Stop, band, stop, stop. Keep the music. I just have to honor the Holy Spirit, yeah. You know that your life is not in a good place. And the Holy Spirit is working with you. Your Father is waiting. He's not mad with you. He's not angry with you. God your Father is sitting and is waiting for you to come. He's waiting for you. He misses you. He misses you. He's your Father. He's not a scary God. He loves you. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. This morning, you have an opportunity to come to Him boldly because Jesus has washed away the shame. Jesus has paid the price for the guilt, the shame, and the condemnation. Jesus made a way for you to come to Jesus, to come to God, for you to walk into His presence without condemnation. But to come with excitement, to come expecting something from God, it's not a walk of shame. It's not a walk of guilt. It's a walk of freedom. God stands and He says, Come to me. Come to me, my child. Come to me. Let me dress you. Let me set you free. Let me just renew you. Let me tell you who you are. You are my son. You are my daughter. I want to restore you. I want to restore your broken image. I want to help you. Come to me. This morning you say, Pastor, that's me. You're talking to me. 
God's talking to me this morning. I need to come to Jesus. I need to give my life to Jesus. Then all over this place, nobody looking around. This is between you and Jesus. If that is you, I want you to quickly lift up your hand. Say yes. Pray for me, Pastor, please. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on. If that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to come back to Jesus, quickly, lift it up, lift it up. Thank you, thank you. Come on, come on. Come on, you say yes. You're talking to me. My life is not in a good place. I don't know God as a father. I want to know Him as my father. Come on, God is resetting many of your relationships here. There's many of you that have been saved, but God is resetting your relationship because you don't see Him as a father. He's your father. He's Abba. He is Jehovah, the father of creation. He is a personal God. Say, I want to be connected with God. Quickly, lift your hand. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus. Once you raise your hand, you can put it down. I want everybody to look at me. There's some of you standing here, and you know you should come. You know you should respond. And I'm going to give you an opportunity. While we ask those who raise their hands to come forward, I'm going to ask you also to come forward. And then, there are many of us that are hesitant. Because the Bible says, those that are hesitant, you have to take it easy with them. Listen, family. You have to take it easy with them. But then there are those that you have to pluck out of hell. Okay? So there is a time for fire and brimstone preaching to get people out of hell. But then there are many people that you have to work it, work it, work it through relationship. But your love and your encouragement can bring a person to Jesus. So I want to ask you, if you are here and there's somebody with you, that you look with love in your eyes to that person and that you bring that person to the altar as well. So all over this place, you raised your hand. You did not raise your hand, but you want to be reconciled with God. You want to give your life to Jesus this morning. Now I'm going to ask you, please that you don't stay in your seat, but that you walk the walk of freedom, that you lead, take your personal belongings, that you leave your seat, that you come right down to the altar. Thank you, band. You can come up. So as we're going to sing, family, this is the time to look around and look at people and love on people and bring people to the altar in Jesus' name. So that's you. you want to give your life to Jesus? Come. You want to come back to Jesus? Come. Just come right now. Come. 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 Are open door. Here we come, so get ready for another one. And there's many Cause of you another come. one is on the way. Miracle, have some miracle. Open door, have some open door. Here we come, so get ready for another one. Cause another I one is on the way. Miracle, have some miracle. Open door, have to open door. Here we come, so get ready for another one. Cause another one is all the way. Miracle, after miracle. Open door, after open door. Here we come, so get ready for another one. Cause another one is all the way. Miracle, after miracle. Open door, after open door. Okay, I give you one more chance. Because I still feel in my spirit there are people that should be down here. And it's not to bring condemnation. It's just because the Holy Spirit talks to me that I am obedient to Him. Okay, so for that thing, people, what do you do? Do I now be aware of the emotion and the feeling? Or do I be aware of the God who is all the good? The name of all the names. I will be aware of Him with Him and you are good for me. As wat jy happy is met my, en die Heere is ongelukkig omdat ek jy gedoen het wat hy gesê het. Ok, so, I'm asking you, there are many men that need to come to Jesus, but you're so macho. You need to bow your knee. You don't like to hear this, but you have to bow your knee. You have to bow your knee. Because without God, you're in trouble. So I'm asking again. You're standing in this place. You know your life is not right with God. Your heart is pounding. Your throat is like dry. Your ears are like warm and you don't know what's happening with you. It's the Holy Spirit. He's knocking on the door 
of your heart. And I'm not going to let this go until I know that I have done my job in bringing every person that needs to be down here, down here. I can't save you, but I can bring you to Jesus. If you are here today, you should be down here. Leave your seat now. Come. 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 Come to Jesus. Amen. Two types of men that you get in this world. One that believe he cannot be saved because he's too bad. And then those that think, I don't need a savior. I'm okay. It's crazy how I've met men like that, that I would talk to them and I say to them, listen, you need Jesus. And they would tell me, I have enough money. I don't need to give my life to Jesus. I don't need a crutch. Now I would say, if Jesus is a crutch, then rather let him be my life support. But I'm not going to use him as a crutch. He is my life support. He is my, is my everything. So, so strong men need strong, strong men to reach out to them. Listen, guys, there are a lot of strong men in this city, and they need your testimony. They need you to get a hold of them, not to be intimidated by them, not to be afraid of them. Many big men here in our city that need you to go to them. Look them in the eye and say, all your money, all your wealth, everything you have will not save you. You need Jesus. And I'm the one telling you, you can hate me, you might not like me, but this is it. Because that's how men respond. Okay? Yes. Thank you so much for responding. Jesus loves you. I love you. Thank you for coming. It's the best decision of your life. Best, 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 best. Amen? Now, let's pray. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Put your hand on your heart. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I come to you. Thank you, Father that you loved me so much that you sent Jesus to come and save me. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for my sin. Thank you, Jesus, that you overcome death. Thank you that you are alive. Today I give myself to you. I confess you are my Lord and my Savior. I confess you are the Son of God. And I ask you for the Holy Spirit to come and live in my heart to lead me and guide me into all truth. Thank you, Jesus, for a new beginning. Father, I want to know you. Help me. Visit me. When I come to you, will you please come? You said, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Lord, I want to feel your arms and your love like I've never experienced. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is the greatest privilege. Listen, there is no greater privilege than leading people to Jesus. There is no greater privilege. So if you're not addicted soul winner, become addicted to soul winning. Okay? Just go. And if you go through a bad day, do like your pastor does. When the devil comes my way and things get difficult, the first thing I do is I go look for a sinner and I lead them to Jesus. Because I ain't going to let the devil be, keep me in depression. I'm going to kick him in his teeth and tell him, the, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And the only way that we do that is through getting another one saved and another one saved and another one saved, populating heaven and plundering hell in Jesus' name. So it's a privilege to lead people to Jesus. I want us all to catch on to that as soul winners in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for coming. We would love to pray for you individually, give you something just to love on you, invite you back to the house of God, invite you to be part of the family, come to home cell, because we want to take care of you. You're part of this family now. Amen. So please, turn to your left, my right, just follow the leaders, and come on, let's give them a hand as they go. Amen, family. You can take your seat.
as we wrap it up this morning with the tithes and offering quickly the land pledge just to give you feedback because we are doing the countdown of the land pledge there you go all right it's going a bit slower now than it did